I'm commonly asked, how did I do what I did to get what I've got? I used my nine to five job to buy this jet, turboprop, and these toys behind me, buy real estate. And I'm gonna tell you the story of how I did that. First, back in dental school, I bought my first duplex. I used my student loan money, don't tell anybody. And uh, we bought our duplex and we lived in the top and rented out the bottom. It cash flowed, paid for the mortgage, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and part of my heat bill too. Plus the heat rose, so we didn't have to use much heat. My sophomore year of dental school, I bought a sixplex. I used seller financing to buy that no money down. Now I had two sources of income. And I finished up dental school and we got to work and started working and used my nine to five to continue to buy more real estate. I came across a friend of mine at a party one night and he was telling me about some stuff that he was buying. And I thought, huh, I, I should probably look at buying some more real estate. Uh, I read a book a long time ago and it was kind of influential in getting me started, but then school took a lot of effort and I didn't invest for a little while. Lo and behold, another pilot friend called me a few days after I met my friend at the party and he said, hey, I've got a uh, hotel you might be interested in. He said, I don't need to buy a hotel right now. I've got my hands full with my wife and my kids and my, my practice. And he said, well, I think you should just have a look at it. I said, okay. So I met him at noon at the, uh, at the hotel and took a look around and, and he said, I think you ought to buy this. And I said, yeah, I, I think I ought to. I couldn't believe how much I was getting for the dollars amount I was paying. It was cheaper than some people's homes. So I called my uh, friend who I had just seen at the party and said, hey, you want to invest in a hotel with me? He said, sure. So we split the down payment money and brought in a third guy to manage it and gave him equity. And that income paid for that car in the first year. My stockbroker called me, laughed at me, and he said, hey, how's your hotel doing? Ha ha ha. I said, well, I don't know, Sammy. I've got a 110% return on my first year. So I don't know what my return is my second year. Is that infinite? I'm not sure, I can't do that math. But anyway, he ended up losing me money and he's no longer my stockbroker. Don't invest in the stock market, buy real estate, it's a much better deal. So I continued along and picked up a couple of more commercial properties and maybe another duplex here or there. But then I ended up purchasing a, a home out in Wyoming at an airport called Alpine Air Park. And I fell in love with that place the first time I went there. And my wife and I bought a house. We thought, well, maybe it cash flows. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we lose. Worst case scenario, six, $7,000 a year. Cost of a nice vacation anyway. But maybe we break even and maybe on the upside, we make money. Well, it turns out we started making money. So it was pretty fun. Uh, we had a great time going out there, family trips, rafting and horseback riding and all the fun things to do in Wyoming. We said, we should do this with the beach house. So we talked about it a little bit and uh, ended up calling, calling a real estate agent down in Florida. And he said, yeah, come on down. Well, I'd love to show you around. And I said, okay. So we planned to do that on our way to a spring break trip down in Key West, but COVID hit and canceled the whole trip and everything about it. So long story short, about May, we decided that we were gonna go down there. It was still COVID. We got in our plane, not this one, a different one. And we took off and we started flying. And it was like we were skipping school. There was nobody talking, nobody was flying. No commercial airlines were flying. ATC was super quiet when you're talking to your traffic control. It was kind of eerie feeling. Well, we continued on and it was COVID. Um, and, and the realtor had said, you stay at my house. And I said, we're not staying at your house. We got kids and my wife. He goes, no, 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 I got two houses. You just stay at the other one. I said, oh, okay, well, we can do that. So we fly down there, we land the plane. We talk to the guy, the line. The line guy is the guy who, you know, kind of sees over your plane while you're gone. At the FBO, that's like the fuel, where you get fuel for an airplane. And uh, he said, yep, have a nice day. We'll see you in a week. I said, okay. So we met one guy with the car uh, rental place. Met a second guy, got a rental car. We met captain uh, of the boat to take us to the island. So there's a third person we came in contact. And the fourth person was the actual realtor. We looked at 37 houses in a weekend. It was a marathon. So Molly and I decided to sell a V6 Plex in New York. And we called the realtor and said, hey, we want to sell this thing. And she said, great. We are going to list it on Saturday. And everybody, we're going to have an open house on Saturday. Everybody can come and take a look. She said, there's too many people to try and coordinate individual showings for all the potential buyers. So she said, we're just going to do an open house show at one time. Saturday, bids are due by Tuesday at five. I said, hey, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I paid 140 grand for this thing in whatever year I bought it in. And... It had appreciated a bit and it had cash flowed the whole time. It was a six unit building with, with rents. So you'd think six units paying rent and a mortgage payment on 140 grand isn't a whole lot. So anyway, we got our bids on Tuesday night. One of them was significantly higher than the rest. And I said, well, let's take that one. 
And she said, why do you want to take that one? He's got no financial backing. I said, well, what does he have a hard money lender? She said, yeah. I said, that's fine. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? We're going to get a big down payment. And if he, if he bails, we keep his money and we real estate. And she said, okay, fair enough. So that was the uh, end of February that we made that decision. We got his down payment and we were supposed to close like April 15th. Well, March 16th happened and that's when the whole country, the whole world shut down with COVID. So there was no courts, there was no closings, there was nothing going on and we couldn't find the guy. So April 15th came, he didn't close. Granted, none of the courts and lawyers were working yet. April 30th came, nothing. May 15th came, I said, listen, courts are open, things are open now. It's time to like get this guy to move or we're gonna we're gonna move on. So finally there he came to the table and we ended up selling the house, closing and then we ended up ten thirty one exchanging the six bucks that I bought my sophomore year of dental school. No money down. I was fully paid for at this point. Ten thirty one exchanged as that is the down payment for our, our second short term rental property, which is a beach house on an island in, in Florida. Um so now we have no money into this beach house. It's a beautiful place. It needed to have some value add done to it. So I did end up using a little bit of my own money to put this beautiful pool, the waterfall, the deck and hammocks and bar and all sorts of things uh, outside. And so that helped with the cash flow and the rents. And so the rents paid for the cash flow, the difference of the payment. And that was our second property. Fast forward a little bit more. I continued to buy more short term rental properties because they were more lucrative and a whole lot more fun. And we use a plane to get to them all. And then we use the cash flow to pay for the plane. So long story short, that's how we paid for the airplane.